This is the third in a series of videos that covers what you need to know about decompression theory to pass the PADI RDP exam. The first video looked at half times, the second video looked at compartments, and if you haven't watched those two videos already, I would highly recommend you watch them before watching this video, which is about M values. M values are the third part of the equation that helps you understand decompression theory, and once you understand these three things and how they interrelate, you will understand why we have the WXYZ rule, and very importantly, you will be able to explain the differences between the Navy tables and the RDP and what effect those differences have on their use. You can find all the videos on my website, goprocaribbean.com slash decotheory. What is an M value? The M value of a compartment is the maximum amount of nitrogen that the compartment can hold safely without there being an unreasonable chance of bubbles forming causing DCS. So what you can understand from that statement is that every compartment will have its own M value. And what you also already know from watching the video on compartments is that the PADI RDP has 14 compartments. So each of those 14 compartments has an M value. The compartment is capable of holding more nitrogen than its M value, but once the compartment's M value has been exceeded, it would be dangerous to surface immediately. A decompression stop, or, or probably a series of decompression stops, would be required in order to reduce the compartment's nitrogen loading before surfacing. This is what we mean by no stop diving. We always plan a dive when we're diving recreationally so that no compartment contains nitrogen levels greater than their M value. This allows the diver to safely surface at any time without any kind of stop. We also hopefully know that a three minute safety stop is recommended after every dive but if there's an emergency, as long as we've stayed with our, in our NDLs, as long as we've kept all of our compartments nitrogen loadings below their M value, we should be able to safely surface immediately without a safety stop. The M value has a very close relationship with the half time. As a rule, the faster the half time, the higher the M value can be. So the fast compartments will have higher M values than the slow compartments. Once the nitrogen loading reaches a compartment's M value, the diver needs to surface. That compartment has become the controlling compartment. The M value could be likened to a no decompression limit on the RDP. Uh, the different M values are the reasons for the different decompression limits. We were looking at some graphs, some charts, some animated charts in the previous videos. So we're going to go back to those charts and add M values to them. Now we have our chart that we were familiar with from before when we did the video on compartments. And we can add some M values to the chart to see how the M values, the half times and the compartments all work together. So I've given the 10 minute compartment a 75 foot M value. The 30 minute compartment is a 47.5 foot M value. The 60 minute compartment that there's a 30 foot of seawater nitrogen loading M value. The 90 minute compartment 25 foot and the 120 minute compartment 22.5 foot. Let's watch these different compartments loading over time on a dive to 100 feet and see which compartment would hit its M value first. So we have reached a dive time of 10 minutes and as we would expect our 10 minute compartment has gone halfway between starting depth, starting pressure and the depth. It's gone from zero feet of seawater nitrogen loading to 50 feet of seawater nitrogen. And after 20 minutes, our 10 minute compartment has hit its M value. So what we are saying, if this model was, was true, our 
no decompression limit for a dive to 100 feet if it was the first dive of a series of dives or just the first dive would be 20 minutes and that would be as a result of the 10 minute compartment hitting its end value the 10 minute compartment being its controlling compartment now of course we could stay down there longer and all that would happen is that our 10 minute compartment would exceed its M value. Now we can see the 30 minute compartment has exceeded its M value. Now the 60 minute compartment has exceeded its M value. Now the 90 minute compartment has exceeded its M value. And it's not going to be very long before the 120 minute compartment exceeds its M value. So what this also shows us is that all the compartments can exceed their M value. All the compartments can hold more nitrogen than their M value. It's just that if you allow that to happen, you will have to do a series of decompression stops to avoid getting DCS. Now the same chart, but the change is that we are now doing a dive to 80 feet. So let's bring our M values into the chart. They're the same M values, 75 feet for the 10 minute compartment and so on and so forth. Let's watch them load if it was a dive to 80 feet. And again, after 10 minutes, the 10 minute compartment has done one half time. It's gone halfway from zero feet to 80 feet. It has, it is at 40 feet. After 20 minutes, Thirty minutes, and after forty minutes, our ten-minute compartment has hit its M value. So the no decompression limit to a dive to eighty feet, if this model was accurate, would be forty minutes. Now that's not necessarily the case. Different models will give you different results. This model is completely made up. So. Uh, what we can now see as well, the 30 minute compartment was close to close to its end value, but on a dive to 80 feet, it was once again the 10 minute compartment that was the controlling compartment. And as before, it would be possible to exceed the end values, uh, but that wouldn't be very, very sensible unless you are planning a decompression dive and know how to plan it. Now we're going to look at a dive to 70 feet and decide which compartment in this model might become the controlling compartment. It's important also now to realize is that I've changed the scale. Uh, our scale is now going from zero feet of seawater nitrogen loading up to 70 feet of seawater nitrogen loading. So our M value of the 10 minute compartment is actually off the scale of this chart. What that means is that there is no chance the 10 minute compartment can become the controlling compartment. We can watch these compartments filling right now and it is never going to reach its M value. The 10 minute compartment is never going to reach its M value. Once it hits 70 feet, it will stop absorbing nitrogen and that's below its M value. Now we can see the 30 minute compartment is getting close to its M value. Bang, it's hit its M value at a time of 50 minutes. So if this model was true, the 70 foot dive would give us an NDL of 50 minutes and it would actually be the 30 minute compartment that was the controlling compartment, the compartment that was the reason for us having an NDL. Again, they could always go past that. Let's have a look at a dive to 60 feet, again realizing that the 10 minute compartment is never going to reach its M value, but one of these other compartments whose M values are below 60 feet will be the controlling compartments. After 30 minutes, you can see our 30 minute compartment is halfway, it's got 30 feet of seawater on a 60, feet of 60 foot dive. 40 minutes. 50 minutes and after 60 minutes our 60 minute compartment which has a 30 foot M value has reached its M value and become the controlling compartment for a dive to 60 feet and the NDL for a dive to 60 feet with this model would be 60 minutes now we'll look at a dive to 40 feet and again I've changed the scale of the chart so now the 10 minute and the 30 minute 
compartments, their m values are off the scale of the chart, neither of those could possibly become the controlling compartment because the m value is greater than the depth of the dive. So we watch these compartments filling. Which compartment will hit its m value first? Which compartment will become the controlling compartment? Sixty minutes we saw that that sixty minute compartment had indeed gone halfway. It was at twenty feet of seawater nitrogen loading. Coming up on ninety minutes we would expect the ninety minute compartment to be at twenty, which it is. Hundred and twenty minutes and we can see the one hundred and twenty minute compartment coming up on halfway twenty feet of seawater and the sixty minute compartment hit its M value of thirty feet of seawater nitrogen loading. So once again in this one the sixty minute compartment was the controlling compartment and hundred and twenty minutes was the no decompression limit for a forty foot dive. What effect has adding these M values had? We can now see that for any dive shallower than 75 feet, the 10 minute compartment will never reach its M value and will never be the controlling compartment. For a dive shallower than 47 and a half feet, neither the 10 nor the 30 minute compartment will be the controlling compartment and so on. In this five video series, we looked in video one at half times, video two at compartments, and in this video three, we looked at M values. In video 4 I will be looking at surface interval credit which is the reason for the WXYZ rule and then in the fifth and final video I will be looking at the Navy tables versus the RDP. Hope you found them useful and if you have please make sure that on any blog or website that you have if you can link to my website goprocaribbean.com that is the best way you can help me i don't monetize these videos so that adverts don't interrupt to your viewing uh, please pay me back by posting some kind of link to my website you wouldn't believe how much of a difference it makes